Logic Pro drum machine designer. Pretty powerful tool. I'm going to give you some tips in three parts. How to use external sounds from sources like Splice, how to play and tweak inside of drum machine designer, and some of the biggest issues I have by using library with drum machine designer. All that coming up in five seconds. Logic Drum Machine Designer is a super powerful tool and you could use it in Logic using the sounds or the kits that they already have set up or you could use your own custom sounds to create the kits that you want to make to use over and over again. So let's go ahead and dive into Logic and get started. Okay, we're in Logic Pro and we want to first start with dialing up that drum machine designer. Let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna go into our first instrument here and we'll just go and dial up drum machine designer. And the first thing you're gonna notice that pops up is library on that left-hand side. And over here, we've got this reverb and delay that's popping up as additional auxiliaries. Now the whole purpose of this exercise is to not use Logic Library. As you've seen before, I'm not a huge fan of Logic Libraries, especially when you're putting all these plugins. Now I know you can bypass the plugins, so you don't have to comment on that, but the point is that most people don't. Most people just think, okay, let's just dial it up. These are the sounds. So I'm gonna show you how to use Drum Machine Designer, in this case with external samples from Splice and dragging them right in there. But the first order of business for me, because I'm using this tabs mixing system, I don't want extra buses. I wanna be able to direct the effects that I wanna direct and put them on the way that I see fit, not have Logic pre-decide that for me. I'm going to get rid of these extra plugins. So you can see here, there are two sends that I'm going to disable. So we're just gonna say, we don't want these sends. And then I'm also gonna go over here and get rid of these two effects. I don't want them right now. But most importantly, I'm gonna go into my environment. To do that, you might have to figure out what key command is assigned to the environment because it's now hidden from the main menus. To do that, you just need to go to key commands, edit assignments, just type in environment. And for me, it is command eight to get into that. So I'm gonna hit that. What you're gonna see here is this is kind of behind the hood of Logic. Let me get this plugin out of the way. I'm gonna go find out where it is. It's usually in the audio area. I'm gonna select those two auxes that they just brought in and just delete them. So I get them out of my mix so I can keep my mix all together the way that I want to. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close Logic Library. You can do that through the view menu, hide library, or if you know the key command, you can just execute it that way. I'm gonna bring that plugin back up and I'm gonna make some observation here. You'll notice that when you bring in Drum Machine Designer, what it does is it creates a stack. This first instrument is the first instrument in a stack. And actually what's happening in this stack is each of these tracks is going to be a separate sampler that you can tweak the way that you see fit. Now we don't have anything loaded in so we can't see that sampler at this point. But now we're gonna enter in our friend Splice. Tons of sounds, very useful. You can pretty much find whatever you want there. My only criticism of Splice is that the way that they organize their sounds is particularly cumbersome. So if you're gonna look for them on your machine, it's gonna be probably a very frustrating process. Let me show you what that looks like. So if I go into my finder and I just go into my name and I go to Splice and I go to sounds, you're gonna see, oh, packs. Well, look how it's organized here. Now I understand they had to come up with some sort of organization and they can't necessarily do it by the type, but this becomes an exercise in futility. Look at all the thousands of samples I have downloaded. And if I want to get into something, it's like, okay, let's see, what, what can I do? Oh, I got to go into this. Oh, now I got to go into this. Oh, now I got to go into this. And just to get this one sample, not a very practical way to get your sound. So what I end up doing is actually moving this aside here and opening up the desktop version of Splice, and this is gonna give me what I need to get. I'm gonna go to my sounds, and I'm going to check out the library. Now, I'm building a drum kit, so what's the first thing you're gonna get in a drum kit is a kick. So I'm going to go ahead and search in the library for kicks, search. And now I'm, I'm only gonna get kicks here. So now I can just audition some of these. So let's say this is the kick I want. Now in Splice, what's nice about this, you could just drag it right into your drum machine designer here. And now it's in here. If I'm gonna open up this stack here and look into it, now you'll see you have a quick sampler in there. So it's just a one sample shot here. Now you can manipulate it inside the drum machine designer or you can manipulate it outside of it. But what I want you to understand is what's going on here. The drum machine designer is kind of this shell that is a track stack, basically. It doesn't populate what's in the track stack until you start putting things on the pads. And when you do start putting things in the pads, it's gonna dial up its own quick sampler. So rather than have it all in one little plugin, it's actually a bunch of quick samplers on top of each other. So this is now my kick if I wanna play it. 
I got it on my keyboard and I'm able to do that. Now, what's the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to find a snare. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that search out. I'm gonna search it again. I'm gonna say snare. In this case, I'm gonna pick a couple of snares. So let's go ahead and get rid of this and I'm gonna use these two top ones just for fun. And I'm gonna put this one in snare two and I'm gonna put this one in snare one. And now, if I play them together. Okay, now I'm just using my splice by directly dragging from splice the application in to our drum machine designer and starting to build my kit. Now, if I've moved this out of the way again, you'll see that now I've got two new quick sample plugins and it's all under this track stack. So it's really its own thing. Now, the next thing I wanna do is actually get some hi-hats in here. And so I'm gonna just go ahead and search hi-hats and start auditioning some of these things. use this this is my closed so I'll go ahead and you'll notice that if you look in here I can put my clothes in the clothes I can put my pedal hi-hat in the pedal and then I'm gonna go search for an open hi-hat here somewhere let's just use this and I'll go ahead and put this in the open hi-hat area so now typical general MIDI So one other thing I'm gonna do is while we're dealing with hi-hats, they usually have a choke feature, which means that when you're playing that open hi-hat, a closed hi-hat will choke the open hi-hat. To do this in the Drum Machine Designer, all you gotta do is go ahead to this little gear box here and say, hey, we're gonna make this an exclusive group one. And what that does is anytime you actually use that open hi-hat and you want it closed by a closed hi-hat, it'll... it'll shut off that sample. So that is a cool little feature inside this drum machine designer. We're staying pretty basic here, but you could do some loops and things like that and cut them up inside of the drum machine designer. So if we just wanted to do a search on loops and see what happens here, let's find some loops, but we're gonna showcase drums here to make sure we're not getting any other crazy loops here. I'll go ahead and drag this in to C2. And now if I go to my sampler main here, I can see this. Now, one other thing I'm gonna point out here is you'll notice that this loop got loaded in classic mode. So if I were to just to play it, But the others are one shots. And I actually like to have a little bit more control. So I turn the one shot to classic. I don't want the whole sample playing. So I'm gonna go to each one of these samples. I'm gonna change them from one shot to classic. Now when I'm messing with them, I have a little bit more control of the offs of them. If you have a really big kick, it can go over long and you don't really want that necessarily. You may, but you may not. For me, I like to have more control over it. Now you'll notice we stopped on this little sample here and look what happened. There is a dead space. Probably doesn't matter that much, but I like to correct these so they're proper. Especially in Splice, you'll find out there's a lot of samples that have dead space. Make sure you clean that up in the Drum Machine Designer. So let's go back to this loop for a second here and see if there's anything in particular you want to take out of this. So let's play this. Now I happen to like this little guy right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the loop out of the area. I just want this one clap sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the start and the stop of this, just where this clap is. Now there's a couple ways you could do this. You could do transient. So it kind of just snaps to it, which is nice. So now I've just got this. So I'm going to use that clap as its own sample. So you can actually get into some of these loops if you like particular sounds and just use them in your drum machine to get that custom sound. But if I want to use this again, one of the problems is if I don't have this up, it's cumbersome to find it. In other words, if I decided I wanted a second kick, I'm like, okay, well, what was this? Now I got to look at this. Oh, this is uh, this. Well, what you can do is just show that in Finder. So if I wanted a second kick, I can always just say, hey, we want to go ahead and put that right here. And now... I got that kick twice. But if you're already in Splice and you say you want to get another piece of this loop, you can always just say, hey, I'm going to go to here and see what else I like in this. And I'll go ahead and see what's in there. I like this little... 
Now, I don't want to loop this, so I can just turn the loop off. So I'm just saying no loop. Goodbye loop. And now let's hear what this says. Now you'll notice it's a little click on the way out. So this is where I can fade it out a little bit. Oh, I actually want just this. Well, we're going to have to do a little fade out. So if you do want to do that fade out, you do want to zoom into this, which you can do with your mouse and just get a little fade. So yeah, here we go. Now you'll notice that this is significantly lower in level. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this sampler detail and go ahead and turn this little sample up. Now, one thing you want to make sure that you have here is in your settings here that you select pad by key. So whatever key you're hitting on your keyboard, it's actually going to that pad. It's a quicker way to tweak things. If you don't have it, it could be more cumbersome. You might be tweaking something that you don't intend to be tweaking. So definitely do that. At this point, I'm going to assume that I've got everything I want from Splice. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. So that's it for part one of this series. In part two, we'll discuss how to program the sounds you just made from Splice. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, click that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to be notified of future videos. And follow me on Instagram at GGabrielMusic. See you on part two.